Here's the beginnings of my electrolysis setup. See, I've got uh, just a plastic bin that I had laying around. I've got some 12-gauge uh, steel plates that I've cut to size. I bought this from my local metal uh, shop scrap bin for about five bucks. Uh, it came as a uh, it's about four, four feet long sheet, and I just cut it up into these sections to cover each one of the sides of this box here. You can see that here. Yeah, just just regular low carbon steel. I've got my my sacrificial plates here. And uh, drilled, just drilled some quarter inch holes into them, attach them with a screw and a wing nut. What I'm going to do is I'm going to electrically connect all these. Here's what it looks like installed. I cut the wire uh, just long enough so that I could kind of wrap it around this corner here. So when I install this thing, I can just kind of do this, keep it out of the way a little bit. Let me cut it just a tad shorter. Um, but the other thing you want to note, or I want to note, is that keep track of the orientation of these rings terminals so you don't put too much torsion um, on the wire when you have to install these. Let me illustrate what I mean. So if you have your wire here like this and you want to attach your terminals, you want them to be basically like kind of like that because you're going to do one at a time and you don't want to end up attaching one you know, opposite, something like that, because this is 10 gauge wire here. It doesn't really want to twist very easily and it's going to make uh, installation kind of annoying. So, oh, the other reason, that, um, the other thing is that I use 10 gauge wire here, which is rated for about 30 amps. That's usually completely unnecessary, especially if you're going to four different plates. These looked sturdy enough that I wanted to use them, and they gave me enough clearance for the wing nuts, so I just went with these. I've got all my wires cut and everything. Uh, the only thing left to do is install them, but before I do that, I'm going to do one more thing. i got some steel wool, heel, steel, steel wool here, and I'm just going to clean these holes up and uh, uh, just score the end of these terminals real quick, just to make sure i got a nice electrical connection. I'll show you on this one. There's a... Uh, you know, there's some stuff, especially from the cutting fluid from the drill and stuff like that. There'd be a little bit of uh, stuff around the hole. And this metal's been sitting in a metal yard, so it's kind of acquired a little bit of oxidation there. So I'm just going to clean it up a little bit like that. Just to make sure I got a nice electrical connection there. You can see that cleaned up pretty nicely. Really only, only need to do one side, but if I'm feeling lazy and don't want to clean all the copper off, the side that I use, I can just flip it over. So it's going to do both sides. There we go. So I'm just going to do that for all those and also for the inside surfaces of these terminals and then just connect it all. All right, back to the electrolysis tank. So this is kind of the status I'm at. Uh, everything's hooked up and stuff. Now, my next order of business is going to be uh, making some sort of a, something to hang the pieces from. Because a lot of these, I'm not going to be able to stand up in here. Like this one is going to need to be attached to something. The spindle. A lot of these need to be hanging, basically. Um, and the problem is I don't want it to like rest on top of this. A lot of people have tanks where their uh, steel plates are kind of recessed a little bit and they can just put it on the lip of the uh, container as long as it's, you know, non-conductive. But in my case, they kind of stick up. So I actually need to make some sort of a, I don't know, a grating or something so that I can hang this stuff from. Okay, so here's where I left off with the electrolysis tank. Um, I have this three quarter inch piece of aluminum tube, or I should say rod, that I'm going to use as my electrical connector to the pieces that I want to clean. And 
the way I'm going to mount that is I just have some little, uh, this has some standard two and a half ton jacks. Put some PVC that I cut up. I had a, um, I think it was a two and a half or three inch diameter piece of PVC. I just cut it up into these little strips here that I'm going to lay on top here. Um, that's just to electrically isolate <clears throat> the rod from these. And I'm still going to wrap these in some vinyl tape just to keep them from sliding around a little bit. And then the the rod will, well, they're not at the right size right now, but the rod's just going to sit on top of them like this. You can see I've already got the clamp on. This will go directly to the battery. Battery. Um, power supply. And it'll just connect just like that. And then this rod will be energized. And then I can just hang whatever I want off of here. And it'll be, um, it'll just conduct straight through this aluminum. So, yeah, I'm going to just wrap these real quick in uh, vinyl tape and then I'll, I'll show you that. All right, so here's what I'm doing now. I'm just filling my electrolysis tank one gallon at a time and marking where that gallon is. So I've already got one gallon in there. Just got a one gallon jug here of uh, an old antifreeze container. It's just a water jug now. I'm gonna need two hands for this, but essentially I'm just gonna mark a line there, put two gallons. And the reason I'm doing this is so that I can drop my piece in there, fill it up with the amount of water that I want, and then figure out after then remove the piece and figure out how much um, electrolyte uh, washing soda I need to put in there for the amount of gallons, basically. There we go. So I'm just gonna do that until I fill it all the way up. It looks like this jug is probably, it's probably only about five gallons, so it's a relatively small container. Got all my gallon marks marked out. Number six is just the very top, so there we go. It's full of water. And uh, now I'm gonna set it up. I found one loose connection here when I was pulling on, pulling on this thing. There it is. Just popped out of there, so I need to replace that. Looks like I probably didn't get a very good crimp on that. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna put those plates back in there and uh, we'll be pretty much ready to go then. All right, so I just kinda wanna get this electrolysis part process started tonight. Uh, just to see if it actually works or not. So I'm going to start adding my electrolyte solution. I dumped some of the water out um, down to about three gallons or so. And what I want to do is add this electrolyte. This is a uh, super washing soda. Pick this up at Walmart. What I'm going to do is add about one tablespoon of this for every gallon that I'm going to use. All right, there we are. Tank is pretty much set up. Now, I think I'm just gonna start off with this cap here because it's pretty rusty and, uh, oh man, did it change shape? It's pretty rusty and uh, I just wanna try something small, something I don't really care if it, you know, if it gets damaged too much or whatever. So I'm just gonna use this cap for now. I have way too much water, but Whatever. So I think there's two good ways to go about doing this from what I've read. The first being to fully submerge the part and just attach it with some, uh, some steel wire that I have here. This is just regular oxidized wire and uh, I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit with steel wool, get some of the oxidize off or some of the oxidation off and just fully submerge this part. The other one being that you leave a small part of the piece you're cleaning um, outside of the water and you connect the electrode directly to the part, but not letting it get wet. So you can use a copper connection or whatever. Those seem to be the two most effective ways. So this first time, I'm just gonna hang it all the way in and just connect it with some steel wire. One other thing I did was I took some steel wool 
and clean off the end here where I'm going to connect the, the power supply and also the middle where I'm going to hang it from so it has a nice electrical connection. So I'm just going to get my steel wire and uh, just clean it up with some steel wool again. Clean off some of that oxidized and then just kind of wrap it around this thing and hang it in. And that'll be that. Right there's my little holder basket for the cap. And I'm just going to submerge it. And just tie it to the... Uh, to the aluminum rod here. By the way, this is 16 gauge wire. I find it's a good, a good gauge to work with for doing something like this. Your positive lead. is going to attach to your plates here. So I'm just going to attach it to one of these screws here. Like I said, it's not, it's kind of difficult to connect them actually. There we go, that seems okay. But also not great. So that's something I may need to change. Your negative lead is going to go onto your workpiece. In this case, I'm going to hook it onto my aluminum bar. All right, this is the virgin run here. As soon as I flip the switch, power should be on. You can see I just kind of connected all the grounds here. I ran out of black alligator clips, so I just used that last red one. And then I just mechanically separated the positive lead over here. But everything should be connected, and let's see if we'll see if it works. We're switching. Fan is on. Bubbles have formed. A couple things I forgot to mention. This is being done in my garage, which is not ideal because this process actually produces gas. But like I said, I'm only going to run it for a few minutes, and then the real. Uh, Electrolysis will begin hopefully tomorrow, uh, probably the day after. But yeah, the other thing is I'm using 12 volts right now. There's several ways to change the amount of current it's using. The most common way is probably to just change the amount of washing soda you put in here. You can regulate the reaction that way. Um, I'm sure up to a, some saturation point. The other way is to change the proximity of the piece that you're cleaning with the plates. So if I move this over closer to one of the plates, we should start seeing a stronger reaction. And the other way, well, probably the easiest way, is to just use a, a different voltage. So I'm kind of glad I saved these other like 5 and 3 volt leads because if it turns out that this is a little bit too aggressive, then uh, I can always switch to a lower voltage, so that's good. Let me just go ahead and move this closer to one of the plates real quick and see what happens. Yeah, you can see that kind of increased bubble production a little bit. You never want them to touch, but you can see the closer they are, the more bubbles you're getting. You don't want to go too fast, like you don't want to crank 100 volts through this thing or something like that, because you'll get hydrogen embrittlement. So this is looking really good right here. Yeah, the outside's definitely getting a lot cleaner. See, gunk is coming off. Let me clean it with a paper towel real quick and see what it looks like. It 
So you can see it's already looking a lot better. A lot of that stuff is just kind of wiping out. So yeah, that probably needs a little bit longer, but I just kind of wanted to test the setup out. The outside is looking really good. I mean, there's still rust there, so it's going to need a little bit more work, but I mean, the difference is pretty obvious. Pretty cool. <clears throat> so I'm going to make some changes and then uh, try this again. 